Now what I have today is a Camillus titanium bonded. I don't know if this one actually even has a name. It's a it's a a knife by Camillus. 9.5 inch drop point. Comes with a lifetime warranty. Four and a half inch blade. Oh. Alright, mosquitoes are eating me. Let's uh, move out of the shade a little bit, see if that helps. The one downside, oh, about summertime, mosquitoes. Oh, I can't stand those little buggers. All right. Oh, two minutes, I'm already chewed up. Okay. Four and a half inch blade, nine and a half inch full size. Sheath included with an ergonomic grip. It is a stainless steel full tang and has a lanyard hole. As I said before, comes with a lifetime warranty. It will replace regardless of age, normal wear, Sharpening, industrial use or abuse, misuse or neglect. Oh, sorry. It will replace regardless of age. Normal wear, sharpening, industrial use or abuse, misuse or neglect is not covered. Defective products will be replaced with the same one or one of equal value. Uh, CamillusKnives.com and they are on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. The company is the Acme United Corporation. Um, and Camillus is made in China. This product can expose you to chemicals including a very big word that's kind of hard to read when I mention all the mosquito bites. Dye 2 ethyl X phylate which is known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects and other reproductive harm. Okay, so this one doesn't have a name, but its model number is 19356. So. I should note, both this and this were sent to me by a subscriber, Frank D. I got it a couple of weeks ago now. I'm getting around to doing the review on this. Now, I actually should mention, um, other than the fact that I did a review on my Selkirk, and then I did like the Selkirk one year later video, I did tell myself I was not going to be doing cheap knives because essentially you get what you pay for. And then Frank D sent me a take a bit of a break to deal with some mosquito bites. Holy jumpins. I sat down for like, what, a minute and I was just swarmed. Whew. 
I just noticed this whole field is just full of uh, Hilo. Okay. As mentioned, I was not going to do a bunch of reviews about a bunch of cheap knives. In my opinion, you get what you pay for. Cheap knives are just that. But then, Frank sent me a Mora knife completely changed my opinion of that. More knives, awesome. They really are. They're really good knives for a very, very cheap price. Can you guys... Hit? I got a red-tailed hawk circling around and he's every once in a while he's, he's calling out. You might recognize that sound right there. You might not recognize that sound, but they use the red-tailed hawk in all the movies and TV shows for any bird of prey because they just sound so cool. They sound so much better than almost any other bird of prey. Oh, we got one, two, three. I hope the he just did it in. I hope the camera picks that up. I love that sound. Okay. Thank you for purchasing the Camillus knife. Our knives are made of the finest cutlery grade steels and are thorough hardened to hold its edge. With proper care, this knife will continue to provide cutting quality, or quality cutting performance for an extended period of time. After each use, Clean thoroughly with soap and water and immediately towel dry. When the knife is fully dry, oil the blade with steel lubricant to prevent rust. Use glass cleaner to clean the knife handle. Huh. Then it goes a little bit into, you know, how to sharpen it kind of whatever. Always store a fine knife outside of its sheath. <laughs> Always store a fine knife, eh? <laughs> okay. Remember kids, don't leave garbage in the woods. Still being eaten alive here. It's probably because I'm sitting in the grass now, but holy jumpins. I'm all chewed up. Okay. So the, the belt loop, it's not gonna accommodate like a, a very big belt, like just two fingers, maybe maybe just a little more, because belts aren't gonna be as thick as my fingers are. Oh, what I wouldn't give for some bergamot right now to help keep these mosquitoes away from me. I'm all chewed up. Whoa, hey, hey, hey. Okay. The handle actually, it's, it's, it's got a got a nice feel to it. It's, it's all right. There, there might be a little bit of a hot spot right here. That might be because my, my hands are a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter than your typical kind of bush crafty guy or whatever. And I'm feeling a bit of a hot spot right in here. So, extended use, you're, you're probably going to blister up your hands a little bit, I, I would think. Well, how can you tell, Dave? You, you just touched it. You just got a hold of it. Well, I'm glad you asked. 
hold it really, really tight. Grab a hold of it and grip it really, really, really tight. And just sort of mash your hand a little bit around and, you know, get a, get a good feeling for it. And that's going to almost kind of simulate extended use. And what I'm feeling is just a sort of that, that rubbing, almost like a, a faint sting here, here, and here. That tells me that there's a hot spot basically here, here, and here that over time will probably develop blisters. So it's stitched and rivet reinforced and reinforced here and reinforced here on the back that holds the, the clasp on. It's single stitched all the way around. Double stitched on the reinforcement here, a reinforcement here, single stitched here, and then the rivets. So, all in all, not really a bad case. Not really a bad case at all. Um, and I like the button snap. I don't like Velcro. I really, really don't like Velcro. Uh, several reasons. One, it's loud. When you're tearing the Velcro off, it, it is loud. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like dealing with it. Uh, number two wears out over time. Velcro doesn't last very long at all. You know, I mean, depending on the amount that you rip it open and close it up, but, I mean, it's it's knife sheath. Right? You're, you're, you're at camp, you're probably going to use it a fair bit, so, you know, all in all, depending on how much you camp, it might that case might only last, like, maybe a year, maybe two. So you could have a knife that could possibly last you forever, but the case is garbage because it's got Velcro on it. So I like the clasp. So. Okay, so it's reinforced down at the bottom with a rivet and the knife blade doesn't go like right to the very end so they've they've given it push it all the way in flip it over there's the point right there so it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom so as long as you're not bending it over like I am messing around that'll be fine you can you can work with that I've had knives where the, the point, over time, the, the top here would, would kind of loosen up and it would allow the knife to get out a little bit further and the point would start going through the case. This leaves extra room so that that won't happen. Smart thinking. I like that. Okay, the blade... I guess you could technically call that a drop point. That's a drop point. And that's actually a mild drop point, all in all. Right? It, it, it curves downward. Whereas this is fairly straight, and then right near the end, it's just got a little bit of an angle where it goes down. That's not really a drop point. That's. like compared to my usual knife it's got a little more handle a slightly a little less blade but all in all they are very very similar in size and to me that's a good size
for a bush knife. If you're camping, if you're bushcrafting, if you're, you know, kind of whatever, I mean, you know, you don't want a one tool option for everything. You want a bit of a collection of knives, if at all possible. You know, something small, maybe a folding knife or, you know, um, something like this very, very awesome uh, Bush Lore uh, Mini from Condor. Perfect. Perfect. And then you got your usual one and then maybe a big one for, you know, bigger hacking uh, type tasks or whatever. But for your medium knife, that's about the size you want and if you're only carrying one knife that's what I recommend right there unless uh, unless maybe you're just a little bit more advanced and then a kukri is definitely awesome awesome but uh, we're not talking about those today we're talking about this here so okay once again Actually, you know what? No, the way the, the handle is, um, it's got a bit of a guard, so the choil doesn't matter. See, I don't like the choil on this one here, um, because any time I've ever kind of tried to come up on the blade, um, I cut my finger, because the choil's not big enough. Choil here, doesn't matter, because the, the way the handle is, ergonomic grip, you, uh, you don't need a choil on it at all, actually. Um, there's, there's no gripping on the, the back of the blade at all. Um, what do they call that? Little notches on the back of the blade up here to, to put your thumb onto. Chimping or chipping or, I don't know. But it doesn't have that. Those things right there doesn't have it so those are actually pretty handy I like those so, this doesn't have that that is kind of a downside she throws some nice sparks though that is a nice spine that's important Still cleans up pretty good. Yeah. And honestly, I've never really had a problem with a knife not cleaning up after you've struck a ferro run. It always cleans up nice. Always does. I've never had a problem. Okay. Let's see about cutting now. Okay. Here we are. Sitting back in the grass with all the mosquitoes. Take some of this wild mint here. Bergamot seems to be the best mint to use, but mint generally will keep mosquitoes away, so. All right. Not bad. Out of the package, sharp enough to shave. Uh, I guess I should show you guys that. Ugh. It's not a perfect shave, but it does shave. So out of the package, it's pretty sharp.
This might be a little too big for it. Hardening seems to be okay. Doesn't shave hair anymore. Not even one. So, edge retention does leave a little bit to, de to be desired, but uh, that's stainless steel for you. You want really good edge, edge retention, go with uh, carbon. Carbon steel really is good for edge retention. Um, stainless steel isn't bad. Uh, and you don't have to, you don't have to uh, oil it and whatever. So yeah, you got to sharpen it a little more often, but you don't have to, you know, be so worried about oiling it as much. So all in all, not bad. She goes in pretty well. Still straight. So blade hardness is good. Edge retention does leave a little bit to desired, but like I say, stainless steel. It's got some hot spots, you know, over an extended period of time. It's uh it's gonna toughen up your hands if you use it a lot. Eventually you, you know your hands will get used to it. Um as long as you're using it, you know, fairly regularly. Um so, decent case, feels relatively good, comes nice and sharp, uh, hardness, you know, she's definitely a tough knife, definitely not bad. Uh, down points, the edge tension, like I say. A little bit to be desired. There are some hot spots on the handle that, uh, you know, will be a, a real pain in the butt. Um, but all in all, for one of the cheaper knives, and I still can't seem to get far enough away from the airport. Oh, that's like a two person. Someone's having fun. Dual engine. I haven't done that in so long, you guys. I don't really know how much I miss it considering I get airsick a lot. Not all the time, not every time, but a lot. Yeah, I do, honestly. Okay. Um, so yeah, the, the bad points, edge retention, and uh, the hot spots. Um, but for, for a cheaper knife, uh, to start out, it's it's definitely cheaper than, than what I paid for the Selkirk. I I know that. I think this I think this was about forty bucks uh, Canadian, um, maybe fifty. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I remember I was looking at it. I was thinking about buying it. I decided not to. Um, and then. And that was back when I wasn't doing like quite so many videos and uh, the weather was bad and I was 
kind of desperate to um, to do two videos a week. And all in all, I, I kind of figured, you know what, I'd rather put out quality videos than, than just desperate videos. So I didn't, you know, I didn't buy all the really, really cheap stuff. Um, just like I say, cheap knives as far as I'm concerned, you get what you pay for. Until Frank sent me that more knife, totally changed my opinion. Bargain hunting on a knife actually isn't that bad of a deal. Those are grape leaves, by the way. Getting a little thirsty out here. So, for, for shopping around, looking for a budget, just starting out, you can do a lot worse than the Camillus, okay? Trust me. You can do a lot worse than this. Bear <coughs> grills. So, as a starting out knife for somebody who can't afford to just run out and get all their equipment at once, but they want to do at least the five C's in, in the beginning, working on a budget. Okay. Horrible time for my battery to die. I was just wrapping up. But as I was saying, for somebody putting together a kit and they're working on the first five C's, they don't have a whole lot of money, and they want to get as much as they can for as little as possible, you can do a lot worse than this. And as long as you keep something that will help sharpen this in the field, I'll call this a pass. So, you never know. You never know. It, uh, it might not be so bad in, in the hands of uh, someone with uh, smaller hands or bigger hands. The hot spots might be non-existent or possibly in a different place. And uh, as long as you have a means to sharpen your blade, edge retention isn't necessarily going to be that much of a problem. Uh, as for everything else, at a, at a quick look, I don't think it's that bad of a knife. I really don't. Um, I, I'd still go for the knife that I normally use. I'd still, if I had to do it over again, I'd still buy the Selkirk. But I could afford the Selkirk at the time. If you don't have $90, $100, you have 40 or 50, you could do a lot worse than that. So I'm gonna call it a pass, providing you have a sharpener in the field with you. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll uh, see you in the next video. And I hope you're enjoying your summer. Got lots coming up.